everyone for um, coming tonight. We normally have our openings on a Saturday, so uh, it's a little bit of a change. You know, we have a weeknight, so it's, it's always good to have a variety. Um, first of all, I'd like to acknowledge the Gadigal people the, of the Aurora Nation, the original custodians of the land, and pay respect to the elders, both past and present. Um, I first met David, actually, at um, Paddington Art Prize. I think he was a finalist quite a number of years ago. Um, when I was one of the co-principal sponsors and um, I remember we had a brief chat but we actually didn't have a further conversation until like probably about a year later after that and um, and we've been exhibiting David's work ever since and it's funny like this is second solo exhibition in our atrium but it seems like he probably like it seems like because I see him all the time it seems like he probably would have five exhibitions already <laughs> We've been to uh, Sydney Contemporary, you know, like you know, at the last Sydney Contemporary, and then we went to uh, Hong Kong, you know. So uh, yeah, it feels like that, you know, he's had quite a lot of exhibitions already in our gallery. Um, but um, Ron Ramsey also have um, a, a fair bit of history with connection with um, with David. You know, they um, both sort of connected with Newcastle Gallery at one stage, and now obviously Ron is. Um, Executive Director of the Art Gallery Society at New South Wales Art Gallery, so I see Ron quite a bit there as well, and um, and it's it's very it's very kind of him to uh, come and to open the exhibition for us, and I thought that he'd be perfect to say a few things about David. So I'd like you all to welcome uh, Ron Renzi. Thank you very much, and thank you, Simon. I mean, Simon is incredible, isn't he? He's just I, I said it last time I was here. He's just everywhere. You, you <laughs> just see Simon in different places, different countries, different galleries, which are great. But having said that, you also see, I, I come across a lot of David's work in unexpected places too, which is fantastic. Um, coming from the Hunter, and um, I noticed that David has been born in Gloucester. Is that the Hunter? But I do remember when, as a Victorian, I do remember in uh, art school seeing a fantastic painting uh, by Streeton called Gloucester Buckets. Mm -hmm. And it's a beautiful painting with wonderful bursts of, of rain coming down. And I, I just assumed that was, you know, the rain was bucketing down, but it's actually the name of the rain, which is the Gloucester yes. Buckets. <laughs> so it, it's a beautiful part of the world. And uh, it's no surprise that. Um, David's work is so embedded in landscape and Australians love landscape you know you just need to see uh, the artist tomorrow this time tomorrow night I'm introducing a speaker at the art gallery a woman called Ruth Pullen who's talking about von Gerard and Eugene von Gerard who was Austro-Hungarian who came to Australia in 1851 to dig for gold but he painted with his father um, around Europe and particularly in Italy and um, you know his paintings was something particularly in Victoria that uh, was so beautifully finished you enter the painting and having had family sort of picnics in the Dandenongs and the fern tree forests you know those paintings of his were and are um, very special but portraiture is the other thing that is um, loved by Australians and and Von Gerard did this incredible range of things that were portraits of homesteads. And so people who owned these fantastic properties, he would, would paint them in enormous detail. Today, this afternoon, I was with a foundation member and we went to a new work of art that had been purchased at the Arc of New South Wales um, that I hope you get to see. It's a tiny little work, a little 9 by 5 by Charles Condor. It's called 1888. Queen's birthday holiday, which surprised me that they celebrated the Queen's birthday holiday as we do. I looked it up, it was on the 11th of June. Um, so things, there's a sort of continuum there. But it's the most beautiful little thing and um, bought by private benefactors. But again, looking at that landscape, and you could, you, it was couples on the beach when he was painting in Bronte, and, and you thought, oh, it, it tells you a story, the detail. You could see why were these people sitting on the beach in the middle of winter? Uh, unusual for, for families and that to do at that time. So it's lovely to come tonight to this exhibition and be surrounded by this extraordinary work. And I was very curious when I came, because I, there's an essay online that Angela Phil has written about David's work, and Angela's well known, um, in, she was a lecturer at the university where, where David was, and um, it's interesting to look, she talks about David's, 
particularly his sepia works and not, and not really connecting with features like trees and flora and fauna, that it was actually about purely the, the subject, the rock, the land. And I notice in this later exhibition where some of the formations of some of the landscape are starting uh, to appear. But I was very interested in the way that David applies the ink in the sepia works. If any of you go to the gallery at the moment, there's an exhibition called Adman, the works of Andy Warhol. Very unexpected works, very early works, um, which are mainly ink, not Marilyn's and not Mao's. And he has a very interesting way of drawing line and sort of smudging them and blotting the line. And that's why I was asking you know, David earlier about this incredible work that he does similarly here. I was really interested in these later works too, where talking of Gloucester buckets, we can see <laughs> some reference <laughs> to some of them. Uh, and, and also an assumption in areas as to whether this is a reflection of water or as David has travelled so much into um, remote areas of Australia and overseas, um, whether these were specific locations or general locations. And uh, we've had a lovely conversation tonight about some of these locations and the beautiful little sketchbooks that I think next your next exhibition should have a little display case with some of those fabulous um, drawings uh, of David's in them. Um, I have a, a say Peter, I've been to Peter's place many times and he has a wonderful middle book work and uh, of, of this sort of minimal um, period which is lovely but I, I've told the story the last time I was here but as when I was director of, at Newcastle Art Gallery which has a number of works by David, in fact all of the museums and the Hunter are, and, the private, and public collections have all represented David's work but um, we were doing a stop take and we, there were two of David's work that we couldn't find and um, <laughs> um, and uh, so I went next door to a meeting in the library and I met with the librarian, the chief librarian, and hello! <laughs> and she was reluctant to give it over. So, so I thought, oh, what do I do here? So I went to the next level above over at the council offices and I I emailed them and need to make a meeting and say, look, we've got a problem here. Because, you know, and so I walked into his office all geared up and turned and there behind his desk. <laughs> so I found the two works. Uh, I was too fearful to actually suggest that they come back together. But I think they have since come back together, <laughs> which, is, which is a good thing. Um, David, uh, I, I suppose uh, recently there was... Um, the opportunity for David to exhibit in Hong Kong and uh, it happened at a time when I took a group from the society of 23 people to the Hong Kong Art Fair and to Art Central and uh, uh, I had a group, you know, so a, a group from all around Australia. It's really interesting with the Art Gallery Society with nearly 30,000 members. There are some presumptions that we think that they're all Sydney based. You know, nearly 20% of our members are country New South Wales. Um, but the other thing is that some of our tours are made up of people throughout Australia. We had a woman from Tasmania, a couple from Western Australia, someone from Queensland, uh, and from Tamworth, and, and it was wonderful to take them to Hong Kong. But the couple from Perth couldn't get to Simon's display early and quickly enough because they had a work of David's uh, in Perth. And um, so we got to the opening and uh, it was pretty hot and the air conditioning wasn't working. And so uh, sadly and shamefully I, I went back, I was on the ferry to go back to have a look at it on the Wednesday night to find out it was the only night that it closed early. So I totally missed the display which is a shocker. And, um, but it, what is great to know in in the display that David was so successful that he'd sold 22 works in Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. And you know, Hong Kong, if any of you can get there, it is truly um, an amazing place. Everyone's writing about it because you know, Europe and America, Art Basel are, are popular, but not like the money and the, the excitement of uh, East and West in Hong Kong. And Jacqueline too, has, who was exhibiting as well with Simon, had great success as well, which was 
um, a fantastic thing, but of the 28 works that were assigned, sold 22. And you can understand why with the sepia works and that, that um, Asian um, acknowledgement of, of works on paper and uh, that whole aesthetic beauty of these. So it, it's um, a credit to you. I also wanted to say, when I looked at the CV of David's, David has exhibited with so many galleries. <laughs> and so many, you know, no, it's to your credit. Because I, I really want to spell out that, that, you know, it's really important for all of us to support commercial art galleries. You know, in Newcastle we had a number that tried to start, and, and, and few of them really lasted a long time because a lot of Nova Castings would come to Sydney to, to buy works of art. But the fickle economics makes it a really tough gig for commercial deals, and that's why Simon is really to be commended for his support of the artists, taking them to, to Hong Kong, it all costs money. Um, but, you know, it's part of the resilience of David, the fact that he's been able to move to other gallerists to, and it's also about the resilience of his work, that he's had an incredible career of solo exhibitions and, and representation over a long period of time. Not to age you at all, but, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it is really, really, a, a, a fantastic thing for both Simon um, and, da uh, and David. Um, I suppose the I, I mentioned about um, portraiture, and uh, I, um, I uh, currently a, a person has asked whether I would sit for them for the archer work. They're going to enter in the archer work, and you know it's the second time I've done that, and it's pretty scary doing that. <laughs> uh, and uh, on the third. The third sitting, you know, it's sort of, I think, our interesting portrait because it's sort of the landscape of the face. And um, so on the third sitting, she came in with very, very close observation. She wanted to look at the major landmarks. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, oh, the pits and the gullies. Yeah, yeah. Thanks very much for that. But um, look, it really is interesting, I think, just bring it back to Australians' interest in things a landscape. And I think what for me in this exhibition, and particularly again in my favourite work, I shouldn't be saying that but my bias, um, is that an artist over a long period of time, the artists in this room, will know that their use with colour over a period of time often shows the difference between a novice and someone who's been in the game. And, and the, the works where you have very carefully chosen um, a, a very interesting tonal range um, it just just shows um, your extraordinary experience and ability. So I com I commend the exhibition and uh, congratulations, bravo to you both. And um, it's a great pleasure. I I declare it open. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. I'd like to say a few words. No. <laughs> <laughs> I have to tell you the story of Hong Kong as well, seeing that, you know, we've got a few stories about Hong Kong. When we were in, in Hong Kong, um, Art Central, there's sort of like thousands of people that went through, and they were sort of like um, teachers of, um, of ink, you know, Chinese traditional ink drawings and so on. So a couple of teachers actually brought the class along, and they were sort of really impressed with David's work. So anyway, Ariel and I went, went on to Beijing, you know, to try and connect with galleries there. And David so stayed on for a few days. He decided <laughs> to go to a local art supply shop to buy more paint brushes. And then he walked in there, he's mocked by all these people, right? Like, he said, oh, <laughs> Dr. David Witherow, you know, master in artists. And they actually post on Facebook, have photos taken with him. And they said, Dr. Um, David Witherow, uh, ink master in artists, sold out at Basel on the first day. <laughs> I don't think you get it. <laughs> <laughs> I think normally you try to lie about you know, all this publicity, but so somebody's doing it for us. You know, so I, that good. I contact Simon and say, Simon, I'm going to do this, it's all wrong. He goes, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. We didn't say it. <laughs> so thank you very much for coming today. And um, you know, I think um, if you're interested in any of the work, you should come and see me. <laughs>